I think it's safe to say the art community on TikTok has a huge problem and today we're going to talk about it for the most part. Today we're going to talk about some issues that have slowly started turning the TikTok art community into a slightly less toxic version of the Twitter art community. And we honestly don't want that because we all know what it will become if we let this happen. So I saw this video on my For You page about the TikTok artist experience and just going through the comments, it's clearly obvious that almost everyone is just not happy with how the TikTok art community is turning out and most people are just fed up with the kind of things that are going on within the art community on TikTok. From artists complaining about other artists styles just because they don't like it or they don't find it appealing enough to them, to people not accepting beginner artists and just being plain rude to them, making fun of their art style and disregarding their art calling it subpar and inferior. And as much as I never expected this to happen on an app that majorly runs videos as its main form of content and doesn't give its users the opportunity of just posting images making fun of another person's work or tracing their art and even going as far as fixing it just because they don't like the artist or the artist did something that they find problematic, they still somehow managed to find their way on the app and are pissing people off just like they did on Twitter. For some reason people are picking on artists on TikTok who draw in a chibi style or anything that is even remotely similar to that and then they call it the pro shipper art style. Even when the content of the artist's work has nothing to do with shipping underage characters or anything provocative. This started after people began calling out artists who draw rule 34 fan art of characters from different IPs and try to ship them even when it doesn't make any sense or when they are children. Like when people draw ships of Dio and Giorno in very inappropriate scenes or Denji and Makima because they feel like it. Or just drawing ships of Genshin Impact characters dragon romper characters and literally every other IP that has a fan base and artists making drawings of their favorite characters. Usually most of these artists drawings look cute and are stylized with a larger head compared to the body and also larger eyes similar to what chibi characters look like. And the drawings are always so good and like you can tell this person actually knows how to draw. But then they just prefer to use their skills drawing weird stuff and then go ahead to share it on TikTok which is filled with a younger audience who are also fans of these characters and are going to find these drawings one way or another. It's so bad that whenever people see an artist with a similar art style, they immediately start leaving comments like pro shipper, pro shipper art style or other similarly annoying things to artists who have no idea what it means and are just taking them as insults. And the the problem is, the people leaving these comments may not have even bothered to check the other type of art the artist makes on their TikTok account or if they were even shipping characters at all. But just because their art style looks like that, they immediately start calling them pro shipper. Some people even go out of their way to fix this supposed pro shipper art style without even taking permission from the artists themselves because they think they are in the right and are doing the art community a huge favor when it's clearly just spreading more and more negativity and hate amongst artists. You can leave comments telling them what they're doing is wrong and try to explain why shipping these characters is clearly inappropriate since some of these people are literally children so they might not know or understand how morally wrong and inappropriate these kinds of images are so taking your time to explain to them so they might learn and understand your point is way better than you taking their work and trying to fix it yourself even though you think you're doing them a huge favor. They're probably not going to see it that way and think you're a troll or just hating them because of how their art looks and then they'll keep on making more of it just to continue pissing you off. Next we have the rendering process commenters that straight up bully artists who have stylized art and call it ugly because the drawings don't look realistic and the proportions are exaggerated and don't look like the kind of art they're used to seeing from their favorite artists. This whole controversy started a couple of years ago when an artist made a video on TikTok of their rendering process and also called it a rendering process. And in the video, they showed how they made their art from start to finish and tried to teach people a few tips they could use for their own art and people immediately started calling the art ugly, saying the rendering process looked terrible and the artist should literally quit drawing. They bullied the artist so much saying their art style looked 
looked ugly and their proportions were way off and turned it into an entirely unnecessary situation just because they didn't like the art style. And then people started making videos mimicking the art style and even making it look more elongated, drawing the nose bridge so far down from the eyes, giving the head a very stretched look. Some people started defending the artist and tried to explain that it was the perspective of the drawing that made it look elongated and the people making fun of it had no idea how perspective worked. Which is actually true since in some instances the head looks elongated if you are looking at it from above and the jaw and mouth do the same when the head is seen from below. People kept on criticizing the artist for not trying to stick to realism in their drawing even when it was clearly obvious the artist was just young and still learning how to draw. Obviously, they are going to eventually learn anatomy and improve their proportions with time. I understand some art styles need to stick to normal, accurate human proportions just to make the drawings look more appealing. But then again, not everyone has to make their drawings look accurate if they don't feel like it. There are tons of art styles that are abstract and don't have anatomically correct features and nothing is wrong with them at all because the context is stylized and people immediately understand it when looking at it. Most of the characters in Despicable Me all have funny looking features and are meant to look that way because the show is stylized and funny and all the characters act quirky just like the way they look. Even the concept artists that worked on the designs didn't even try to keep them cute or stick with accurate proportions when exploring the characters but made them as exaggerated and funny looking as they could because that was the look they were going for. So just let people enjoy making the art they like and don't try to force them to draw a certain way because you prefer prefer that art style or you think it looks better to you. And before you even try to insult an artist's art style or work, at least try to have an understanding of art yourself and put yourself in the artist's shoes. How would you feel if that was done to you? I'm sure you wouldn't be finding it funny at all. Next we have the tracing debate where some artists in the TikTok art community believe tracing is an important part of learning how to draw and develop your skills as an artist, while others argue that it is wrong to just trace another artist's work and post it online as if it were drawn by you. I personally am not a big fan of tracing at all and I wouldn't recommend anyone using tracing as a part of their drawing process since it doesn't really help you in learning how to draw your proportions correctly or even understanding line weights. But if you really had to trace a drawing or if you're just a beginner artist who's getting into art and you're just having fun tracing over your favorite artist's work, do it on your own in your spare time and keep it offline. Don't bother posting it on the internet or anywhere other people will see it and be able to leave comments talking about it. Because they're obviously going to call you out for plagiarism and you're going to get a ton of backlash on the drawing because the art community doesn't take tracing lightly and people will immediately call you out for disrespecting the original artist's work. Some other people say tracing is good and use it as a part of their drawing process but then anytime I see them use tracing it's always as an underlined base for a portrait painting and I understand that because when I was in university I saw painting students use tracing as a step to nail the proportions of their portraits fast so they don't have to sketch the entire head from scratch and worry about the features of the face and placing them correctly. Now would you call that cheating? I don't know. I'm not sure. I think it's left to you. This TikToker tried to explain it as best as she could and I think she actually shed some light on it. I really don't know why this is so controversial and needs to be said, but tracing is not cheating. As a matter of fact, the thing about art is that you can't cheat. You can lie for sure, don't do that, but as there are no rules or guidelines or even right and wrong in the making of art, you can't cheat. Tracing is a great skill to have and I'd recommend beginners to gain some ability at it. It's a big time saver on projects and a great tool for certain desired effects. My one word of caution, however, is that you can cheat yourself. While tracing and transferring is a great tool, the drawings made by it will always have a stiffness and a staleness to them. Don't neglect your practice at drawing and creating by hand. It's here where you develop your own style. Make sure to establish work true to you. And that might include tracing, it might not. Think of it like this. Tracing should be a tool at your disposal, but not something you depend completely on. If a master is only as good as their weapon, are they really a master? I still think beginners should start off with learning the fundamentals and understanding how to nail the proportions by eyeballing them instead of relying on tracing to help them. I'll suggest using tracing only as a means to nail the facial features if you're drawing portraits of people and don't have time to actually make a quick sketch of the drawing. Next, we have people hating on beginner artists and attacking them for their work. And this one is probably the one that annoys me the most and I just don't understand how people just feel doing this to beginner artists. Now I don't know about any of you but 
I never started out as an amazing artist. Most of my friends who are artists did not start out as amazing artists as well. So for you to expect a total beginner to immediately start making insanely good and professional images like your favorite artist is just ridiculous and absurd. And so is bullying them because their art looks bad and awful. It's as if people enjoy putting other artists down whenever they see them trying so hard to improve and just make something of their work. Every artist starts from somewhere so if you don't like an artist's work just scroll past it or don't bother following them. You really don't have to discourage them by leaving comments making fun of their work. Young artists and beginners starting out their art journey need all the help they can get and discouraging them from even making art at all doesn't say well about the art community no matter the platform. Instead of using your time to ruin someone's day, how about you share some tips with them or links to tutorials and other resources that could help them improve. At least that way you're contributing positively in their lives and they will thank you for it. Even if you want to tell them something is wrong with their art or their mistakes in their drawing, don't just criticize them blindly. Try to help out by giving the artist actual constructive criticism that they could use to improve their next work. Which leads me to the next part. The people who make it their sole purpose to give everyone who makes anything that resembles a drawing on TikTok. And mostly their only criticism is the drawing doesn't look right because the art style is funny. I know you think what you're doing is okay and you really think you're helping the artist, but you have to understand that not everyone is going to want to take your criticism. So don't feel bad if people tell you to honestly leave them alone when you try to criticize their drawings. Reply saying things like, who asked? Because really though, who asked? And another thing people fail to understand is, you cannot just criticize a drawing because of the art style. That is just absurd. Art is subjective. I know right? Shocker. And I know this may come as a surprise to you but some people actually love having their drawings look stylized or quirky or goofy with weird proportions and it's completely okay. Now I'm not saying people should use art style as an excuse for making bad drawings but as someone wise once said, learn the rules so you can break them. Which in this context basically means learn the fundamentals of art like anatomy, color, form, etc so you can bend them later when you're making your own work. Because you don't have to conform to only one way of drawing and no one can force you. And as much as most people are just complaining and leaving comments talking about how negative the community is turning out to be, I would say my experience within the TikTok art community has been rather different. I've been on TikTok for quite a while now and I just recently started making videos and engaging in the art community and for the most part my experience has been somewhat positive because I mostly keep my activities within the learning, teaching and tutorial genre of the TikTok art community. So my entire for you page is filled with videos that are specifically centered around that part of the community and for the most part are relatively unproblematic. But from time to time I get recommended some commentary videos making fun of the TikTok TikTok art community and after watching a couple of them, it's clearly obvious that this community has a huge problem. I think the TikTok art community is really inspiring and most artists I've come in contact with or talked to have all been really friendly and nice and I just want the community to keep on being this way for every artist regardless if you're just starting out or you already have experience making drawings. Drawing is a long process that takes time and requires patience and lots of practice. So try to inspire and motivate every artist you see trying their best to improve because it takes guts to just keep drawing and keep making mistakes daily and see little progress each day. Let people enjoy their art and if you don't like it, just don't look at it. It's that simple. Don't try to criticize them or make fun of their drawings because of the art style. And as for the people fixing art and shipping characters that are inappropriate, there are tons of other hobbies you can learn if you don't have anything to do with your spare time. Like fishing for example. Since you're already good at baiting people to get mad at you, how about you try some fish instead? At least that will prove much more productive. Anyways, that's all I have for you today. If you enjoyed the video, please leave it a like. If you found it helpful, share it with a friend and subscribe to my channel if you're new here. I'll see all of you pretty penguins in the next video. Peace.